Hey everyone, Shark here. Got a 2v2 for you today on the CO2 classic map, Eindhoven Operation. Playing as the Allies, we have an arranged team from the Netherlands, Fredge and Akvavi. Fredge playing as the Americans and Akvavi playing as the Brits. And then on the Axis side, we have a dual DAC team, Blackbird Deo from Japan and Infantryman from South Korea. Uh, as you know, 2v2s have twice the action of a 1v1, so help me keep track of it all is your favorite co-caster, Garrett from the channel Turtle War. 2v2s are, are my favorite game mode to play. If this is something you want to see more of, please let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, as always, we'll have links to Garrett's channel and timestamps in the video description. And with that, we'll roll on to the match. Hey everyone, welcome back. Got a 2v2 for you today. Uh, at the bottom of the screen is a dual DAC team of Blackbird and Infantryman. Um, and then on the top of the screen, uh, on the kind of the southwest of the map, uh, is a mixed allied team of Fredge and Akvavi. Uh, casting with me today, as I mentioned in the intro, is my man Garrett from the channel Turtle War. How you doing today, man? Doing great. Happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is exciting. 2v2s are a little bit different. Uh, for casting, but you're a 2v2 veteran, and so I know we'll get, get really good analysis out of this. Yeah, I'm excited, and, and it looks like Fretch has already uh, gone weapons support center, and he's locked in the armored battle group. He's getting two assault NGs out, so he's starting pretty aggressive. Yeah, and then meanwhile, infantrymen uh, already out with the Bersalieri, although interestingly enough, he only has one of those squads, and he's going with a crowd shoots in, uh, to help with capping. Uh, as is his teammate Blackbird. Um, I wonder, uh, well, I talked to Fredge and I know, uh, I wonder how much he's going to lean into this Assault Engineer build um, after watching uh, uh, Reekly use it to beat Farage in a 1v1 the other day. Yeah, was this, was it, do you know, was this recorded after he watched that? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was because this is after the latest <laughs> hotfix. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm I willing to bet that we will see a sniper. The second squad of bursts is out for infantrymen. Um, and right now the Fred first thing... Fred's getting <laughs> pushed with that motorbike, but the dingo's coming in to give him some support there. Good teamwork. And then in the center of the map, Crotch shoots him pushed off by a machine gun. So good to see Akvavi using the dingo uh, to support Fred's in contact. Yeah, already some great teamwork between them. That's that's the one thing with two is you need to be on point with teamwork because you have to cover uh, your lane and then half of the middle, basically, is how I always explain it in 2v2s. And that's the tough part, is covering yeah. one and a half lanes. Yeah, the assault engineers over here uh, lose a couple of models on the advance, but then do a lot of damage to these Panzer Grenadiers force a retreat. Meanwhile, uh, infantrymen harassing with this Kettenkrod, it's going to, or the crowd surgeon, it's going to continue to get forced off by this machine gun. But good map control early for the DAC team, making good use of the, the crowd shoots and just spread out the allies. Double burst is at the top. What's that? Yeah, there's a, there's a, a small blob of bursa is just massing and is he's hidden right below him. Yeah, and actually they're going to do a ton of damage to these sappers. And if Akvavi's not careful, he's going to retreat them. But they, uh, looks like they will get away here. Oh, I don't know. One guy left. Oh, this is going to be tight. The crowd shoots him trying to finish off this last sapper. And he will get the wipe. Meanwhile, Panzer Grenadier is pushing in the center and force a, a British retreat. And then on the left side of the map, uh, Panzer Pyro is doing some damage, but forced off. And they're going to get whittled down by these assault engineers as they try to retreat. The good engagements across the map for both sides. Um, Axis with pretty good map control. And about to get the triple cap on. That, that, the start uh, for infantryman, very strong. He's pushed all the way to their base practically. And he's got them pinned right here. Yep, good use of the cover, and they're doing good work against infantry sections. You see, Fredge is going with the weapon support center build, um, and he's he's starting to recap the left-hand side here. The machine gun struggling to find work finally forces a retreat from the Panzer Grenadiers, and Akvavi finally able to to push off uh, infantrymen uh, in the uh, the west side of the map. 
He's been bled a little bit, but not too bad. He still has plenty of manpower, but with two squads, one MG, uh, he may need to get another section out or something to counteract those bursas because two two bursas are gonna over the course of the game they're gonna whittle away your your sections yeah and you gotta expect with this build is very manpower heavy for the DAC but not a lot of fuel investment the light vehicles are coming especially with the the map control that they've had so far dingo calling artillery on the machine gun uh I don't know it hasn't reacted yet Maybe he's calling the bluff. It looks like... Oh, no, there it is. First round comes there in. There it is. I was wondering if it was the decoy flares. I'm like, oh, it would have fooled me. Oh, man. If these pioneers had moved up just a little bit, they probably could have cleared that machine gun. Good flank from the Panzer Grenadiers here onto the assault engineers. They don't want to get too close. Dingo healing on the machine gun in the center. Oh, the Panzer Pioneer squad takes a big hit from the artillery, but they're going to get away. Meanwhile, flame pyos are forcing the assault engines out of a building. The uh, Vickers machine gun is very vulnerable right now. It's about to get flanked hard. Yeah. So good teamwork here from the Axis players. You see the combined healing here in the center and then the flank over here. Uh, See, that's from Blackbird. Good flank to kind of force, and as long as he doesn't close with the assault engineers, he should fare pretty pretty well in this engagement, especially with his forward healing. I know uh, he's gonna have to back out. Yeah, it's just too many too many close quarters units. You got to get out of there. Mm -hmm. And we're in about the middle. six minutes. Six, sorry, six minutes in the game, and uh, Blackbird and Akbavi still haven't chosen a battle group yet. Yeah, the Panzer Eagers do exactly what they meant to do, sneaking up in camouflage to finish off the dingo. All right, and now you see the map kind of split awkwardly, right? Like not evenly across the front, but kind of at an oblique angle, but neither side with a significant resource advantage. So the Axis had a little bit of extra fuel early, but now it, it looks like things are pretty even. You see pressure from infantry sections trying to force off the crowd shoots and capping on the west side of the map. The Bursas may do a little bit of damage, but they are not going to win this fight. They do not have the numbers. And the machine gun on the side is really going to flip this engagement. Oh, yeah, what a bait. He baited them right into it. Yeah. If they hang out here, they're going to eat a lot of damage from these sappers. Throw two grenades, uh, but really just eat a lot of manpower. Now the Greyhound out for Fresh, but a couple of Panzer Jaeger squads are going to be more than enough to force this off, especially the squad here in the half track um, looks like unfortunately they're wasting their bullets on the assault engineers need to have the prioritized vehicles uh, enabled but concurrent with this kind of holding action in the center Akbavi's doing a good job pushing and taking the corner of the map yeah he I'm wondering if that was a good move though if he should have just completely tried to go for the hard flank with everything you I know, guess he moved his MG around. It's helping out a little bit, suppressing these units. And at least now they flipped the, the VP situation, right? Because they're already 130 VPs behind. So by getting up 2 to 1 in VPs at the moment, they can buy themselves some time to tech. Uh, Humber out now for Akvavi. Meanwhile, you got an 8 rod coming out uh, for Blackbird. 8 rod also seen a lot of use lately. And with the DAC upgrades can be really, really potent. Uh, especially with the penetration upgrade can really counter the Humber up here. Both sides have good infantry with snares. I, with the exception of Fredge, who really doesn't. He's got the one bazooka squad, but that's it. Uh, Agvavi, you see upgrading his sections with boys and getting Gurkhas out uh, for some additional anti-infantry firepower. So yeah, it looks like Agvavi is locked in the Indian battle group. Yeah, Gurkhas are really potent and they scale very well against infantry in the late game. Um, this map being much more open, I'd expect to see the Bren upgrade. Oh, this Sapper squad in danger here, and they're going to retreat and probably get away. But the Bursa push is coming, supported by the 8 rods. So, again, good teamwork here. 
Blackbird with impressive micro capping on one side of the map while pushing with his teammate on the other. And that's what you like to see in a good good team 2v2. Pins are gonna, gonna get out with not too much damage. Versus, yep, hit a mine here. And that did that did more damage than I thought it would. Took out three three models and some health. Because I suppose if it hits two squads, the the two model damage limit is applied separately to each squad, right? Yeah, it must. So, Burst is going to be in trouble here against this Hummer without any real anti-vehicle. Meanwhile, Blackbird making a big push on the other flank. Uh, and Fred, she's pushing into the middle, might get caught out here. Although his second Greyhound arrives and pushes off the Panzer Jaegers. Infantryman, he's going to retreat one Burst of squad and get free. His machine gun in the middle is going to get whittled away. Yeah, Blackbird has left infantryman out to dry right now. He's getting, he's kind of facing two battles. Uh, and Blackbird just kind of sitting over on the other side. It looks like he's trying to rotate now, but he might be too late. Relatively conservative rotation to kind of not flanking the enemy, but coming back in to occupy the center. Uh, and that's going to allow uh, Fredge to rotate back around and try to push off this Panzer Grenadier squad that's capping in the corner. I feel like at this point, you really have to get this eight rod in play before some of the heavier vehicles come out. Ooh, scouts go down in the middle. Oh, but the eight rod's in trouble. A couple of boys AT sections pushing on the flank. Both sides back off. These Panzer Grenadiers in the corner are also in trouble if they don't retreat soon. And there they go. Good use of the assault engineers to maintain capping pressure. And so now you see both teams really focusing on, on both VPs, uh, trying uh, to manage the VP battle now that the resource fight is stabilized. I love seeing that both uh, allies players went, they at least have two engineers, which is great for lane mines and just really just making it very difficult to take back land. I hope, I've seen a few mines get placed so far, but they hope they keep that up. Yeah, and I really feel like the allies are prepared for the light vehicle push. Here you see Fred has two Greyhounds, two AT guns, and a bazooka squad. So I feel like uh, he can handle pretty much anything that gets thrown at him as long as he micros it appropriately. Greyhounds are going to make a push here onto this 8 rod. Panzer Yeagers will be there to support uh, Blackbird. And it looks like the Greyhounds are going to focus on the infantry. The Soul Engineer is coming in to support. On the opposite flank, large infantry engagement. Uh, Panzer Jaegers to try to force off the Humber. Jerker's doing some damage. And then a machine gun in the back, if Akbabi can lure uh, infantrymen in here. The Panzer Grens have been run off by the two uh, Greyhounds. They're pretty damaged. One gets snared. Oh, and a Soul Engineer gets evaporated by the 8 rod. Panzer Grenadier is in a rough spot, but they're going to get away. Oh, there's a Martyr in the back line, too. So you got to be careful pushing those Greyhounds. Yeah, the Martyr is too far back to really support right now, although it's going to move forward. Still not in the fight here. I can't believe it's not in range. It seems like it should be, but it's there it is. not firing. Oh, but he backs it up before it can take a shot. And so the Greyhound's going to get away and with all those Assault Engineers. Uh, it'll be repaired in no time. Now Fredge is rotating his AT guns over and it looks like the allies are starting to consolidate their territory gains and really hem in the DAC players here. Infantryman oh. full retreat back to his base. And now the fuel is in question. First P3 coming out for infantrymen shortly. More Panzerjägers coming out as well. I'm counting, I think, four on the field right now. Four total Panzerjäger squads. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, which I mean... Be careful with these light vehicles. Yeah, excellent against light vehicles. I don't know how well that'll uh, translate to the late game once you start seeing uh, Shermans, especially something like a Matilda come out. So right now, Bobby just started building his company command post. At this point, I would refund the pumper before it has any chance of getting killed. I'd refund it, and that's extra fuel that you need to do those side techs, whether it's a 17-pounder 
for Grant, and I hope he I hope he does that. I hope he keeps this hunger alive, and he doesn't try to be too aggressive with it because it's it's a uh, with all these Panzer Jaegers on the field, it's it's walking on thin ice. That's a really good point. Sometimes when you get the Humber vetted up, its utility, especially with the smoke and the marked target, helps it kind of last into the late game. But you're right, there's a lot of anti-light vehicle on the field. Although these Panzer Jaegers are, are suppressed by the machine gun, the Humber is about to go down, but they're both pinned, so it'll get away. P3, very damaged, uh, is snared by infantry. And this infantry blob is really going to get shut down by this machine gun. And now the Gurkhas are coming in to do damage. AT gun in the back, chipping away at the P3. Oh, oh these grenades no. are going to hurt. Oof. Wow. Doesn't look toss. like any wipes, but a lot of manpower damage. That's rough. And that Humber has zero armor. That's what I'm seeing on my side. So somehow it's alive with no health. With, with no HP. Um, and and the allies, you see the improvised armor on the Greyhounds. Um, really, they've set up a really difficult defensive position here. Um, and I, I feel like what the Axis are lacking right now is artillery and smoke. Right, to set up some of these pushes. When you see the machine gun or the AT gun in the back, if you can smoke it, um, it goes a long way. Oh, this MG is going to get torn apart by these Gurkhas. Here we go. A little bit of a mortar half-track. Counter barrage by the Bishop and loses half of its health on the first shot. Oh, there's a Stuka on the field to counter, Artie. I wonder, is he going to fire right now? Oh, that's, I think, read my mind. That's what they need to kind of break through. Use that to knock out a couple of the team weapons and then push hard, regain some of the VP pressure and some of the resources. All right. If infantryman doesn't move, Blackbird's going to get pinched here between the two allied armies. Humber and infantry sections uh, doing enough damage that one of the Panzer Grenadier squads retreats. Here comes the walking Stuka. Firing Tori up right on the Bishop. Yeah. Does a bunch of damage but won't claim any kills. Oh, never mind. Knocks out the Humber. <laughs> I think that was the Panzer Jaegers actually. And now a good push from infantryman with the P3. He looks like he's trying to finish off the bishop here. And he gets it and the collateral onto oh, the AT gun. Man. What a shot. Now the P3 is going to eat some damage from these infantry sections and he needs to stay out of snare range. The AT gun's going to be recruited and land another hit. It'll get out of there though. Yeah. And it'll get repaired right back up. You called it shark. They needed they needed some artillery, something to soften him up, and then he went right in for the killing blow, and he did it. And here comes the push from Blackbird back into the middle. The Axis have taken the VP advantage. The eight rods in danger from the two AT guns, but it will get away. Good use of infantry in the center, but the Greyhound is going to whittle them away. Oh. Panzer Jaeger is forced to retreat. Two Greyhounds lasting longer into this game than you might think and doing good work against the infantry. And now you see the allies investing into a resource cache with some of their additional manpower. Yeah, I'd really love to see some use of smoke on this machine gun to help the Bursilieri move a little bit more effectively and apply better pressure. Can't argue with the allied army composition though. Really balanced here. Light vehicles, team weapons, and then mainline infantry uh, to support pushes, plus some, some snares. Um, they're going to be difficult to unseat without additional artillery. Yeah, both sides doing a kind of combined arms approach, The with the exception being the massive lava bursas, but that's just kind of part of that play style. If you're going to do that, you need to get at least two or three of those squads out. Oh, this P3. Again, in trouble from a combination of the AT gun and the boys' AT rifles. Oh, another Stuka barrage coming in. 
into the center gonna wipe this machine gun and that's unluckily that's pretty much it for it and that half track will immediately recrew more grenades on the uh, the flank here but no kills dodged by infantrymen martyr in the back pushing off these greyhounds and it looks like this is going to be the big fight right here is over this central vp Kenzie is making a push, but there are no vehicles for them to find. The Vickers in the back doing a good job suppressing and, and turning the uh, engagements uh, in the favor of the British. P3 pushing on the flank is going to maintain this VP. Yeah, there's some nice synergy with that Vickers and the double boys squad, but it's not enough to really finish anything off. Yeah, it's enough to win the engagement and force a retreat. That's why that uh, some smoke would be really helpful, but I think Blackbird has both the Mortar Half-Track and the Walking Stuka. And I'm not sure if these two are an arranged team. Uh, if they're not, and you're trying to, to type for comms, it's hard to communicate and coordinate for stuff like smoke. Uh, you really need a, a teammate that's switched on to identify that. And now the EZ-8 hits the field. For the 76 mil Sherman. Uh, I think that's, yep, that's an easy that's eight. That's an easy eight. Along with the Matilda oh, too. Oh no! The Panzer Jaeger is getting knocked out between the easy eight and the, uh, the Greyhounds. Strake and run coming in. But not a loiter. Walking Stuka follows it up, um, but a little bit of a wasted barrage there. But man, these vehicles, American vehicles doing a ton of damage to infantry as they try to take the center. Yeah, now, like you said, a Matilda on the flank to support. Infantryman has a machine gun out, which is smart to help counter the infantry pushes, but the Matilda is going to make short work of that. Oh! <laughs> Speaking wow. of which, there it goes. Wow, that was quick. What a shot. P3 on the flank, but without dedicated AT, this Matilda is going to do work. Fortunately, the Martyr's there to help counter, but it's about to get pinched. Panzerjäger's in the middle. They go down to the Greyhounds in the set, uh, the Easy 8. A P3 is not enough of a counter. Missed. Oh man, here comes the flank in on the P3. First gray shot, Greyhound shot bounces. If I'm them, I focus the Martyr here for sure. Oh, they're actually trying to knock out this walking Stuka. Bersalieri trying to counter in the center. Greyhounds are going to back out. And the Bersalieri are going to force off these assault engineers and get the kill uh, while Fred's just focused on the vehicle engagement. The Matilda is backed up. And you kind of wonder if it had pushed. It could definitely prevent the Bersas yeah, from... Yeah, he, he needs to help in mid right there. Fred's is about to lose his third assault engineers. Yeah, these Bersas when, versus when they vet up very very potent uh against infantry and team weapons jerkers come in to counter well another walking stuka barrage uh so fred unable to knock it out uh, but it doesn't do a ton of damage oh the easy eight's in a bad spot it's pretty hurt oh and here oh, comes the, the loiter oh this easy eight is done yep there it goes you know, unpopular opinion. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the loiters, the click button and, and kill everything in the circle. Uh, but it's part of the game. So investing into uh, anti-air is sometimes really worthwhile. Oh, this bazooka squad just going to get away by the skin of its teeth. Matilda and Gurkhas to counter the infantry over here. And that's a pretty good combo. They, they're, they're doing some damage. Oh, if these Panzer Grenadiers get too aggressive, they're going to pay for it. Oh, and here comes the Tiger. So now we see what Infantryman was holding out for. P3 pushing the Matilda. And with the easy 8 off the field, I think this is a good time to push the Matilda. It's almost done, but it's going to get away. Uh, Blackbird not able to, to finish the fight, and this Panzer Pius squad goes down. Man, a lot of infantry wipes to these Greyhounds. And worth their weight in gold. 
and both these armies are pretty bruised up right now. Everyone's hurt. There's a P3 that's nearly dead on infantryman's side. Looks like he's that's targeting Stuka. the Greyhound with the Stuka. Which those rockets, if they get a direct hit, will do decent deflection damage. But, um, you know, I wonder if you've been better off trying to scout out those AT guns, especially with this Tiger on the field. You knock out the two AT guns are enough to kind of do some damage. You knock those out, and this tiger is going to run rampant all over the map. And it's about to come into contact with Agavavi's infantry here. A couple of boys AT sections with an AT gun and a Matilda in support. Haven't seen a lot out of the bishop since the initial barrage. Um, this is a this is a new one. That original one died. He just got this out, probably to counteract that Stuka. You're right. You're you're right. That P3 killed the bishop, uh, the first one. Which you know, I'm, I think the bishop. It's it's a good call, but since the tiger's on the field, I think he's gonna regret that. You need to get a 17 pounder out or, or something, uh, a grant. You know, something that can puncture a tiger. Yeah. The six pounder uh, getting a couple penetrating hits here, and the, the tiger not whittling down this infantry as fast as you would think. Let's zoom back out here. Now with the bursas in support, uh, the tiger will do really well. Oh, and now Fred's just coming over to support another easy eight and a couple of greyhounds, but a P3 there, uh, and these greyhounds are not equipped to deal with this. The six pounder though has the potential to knock out this P3. P3 is gonna back out and get away. Light vehicles forced off by the Panzerjägers. Matilda coming up to help with those Panzerjägers. I feel like this would be a perfect time for Blackbird to push the center. Uh, and that looks like he's gonna do the P3 and a martyr to try to chase down some of these vehicles. And his two AT guns are they weren't set up and they're still moving back. AT guns creeping forward to cover the center VP under Axis control right now. Both sides pause briefly. P3 is very hurt here. Um, Something coming in the yeah. perimeter monitor? Is that what that is? Oh no, that's oh. the air burst. Well, fortunately that has almost no penetration, so both tanks will get away here. The Walking Stuka counter barraging, going after the AT gun. And really just unlucky RNG here. The Martyr and the P3 forced the Matilda back. A couple of infantry sections coming in to support. The Tiger and the P3 want to continue to push on this VP, but they're both very hurt. And yeah, oh, P3 goes down to the AT gun. Uh, infantryman needs to support this Tiger. I know it's an awesome tank, but it needs the infantry in the rear. Mortar track almost goes down. Uh, P3 bounces the shots from the Greyhounds, but the EZ-8 gonna do work, especially to these assault grenadiers. Oh, and now the, the light vehicle push here in the middle, enough to force off all of Blackbird's kind of reinforcing units. Tiger Greyhound on the point. eats Tiger shot, wow. And is just okay with it. Uh, the gloriousness of improvised armor and veterancy, right? <laughs> yeah. I wonder how that would go uh, in the real world. Oh, the the boys' rifles take out a med truck. It's Which not it? crazy, but it's a uh, he's gonna need that for his purses. You definitely feel that more in the late game because it really hurts your ability to maintain your field presence. The bursas, if they get the flamethrower, but they're focusing the AT gun and not the machine gun, and so they're not they're eventually gonna get forced off. Oh, strafing run coming in, trying to clear the MG. Nice. Good use of that ability. Tiger back pushing up. Oh, but the Matilda could do some damage here. Oh no, this is dangerous. But they'll steal the machine gun and get away. As he continues to kind of press with the Tiger and try to repair it at the same time. Blackbird reassembling in the center for another push on the center VP. Martyr, a half track, and a P3 with a couple mortar tracks and a walking Stuka in support. 
this bishop hasn't fired much. He needs to... I mean, he's got it. You gotta use it. Yeah. Oh, now he's firing on the tiger, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Which, it looks like he's gonna miss and not do as much damage to the, uh, the pioneers as he'd like. Good use of the smoke here on the machine gun in the center. Assault. Grenadier is also dropping smoke to get the cap off. Uh, machine gun bunker on this VP to dissuade capture. The Tiger knocks it out. Um, still being repaired. Tiger is more than a match for the Matilda, but this push here from Akvavi on the flank could be dangerous for it. If he's not prepared. The more artillery coming in. Another air burst. Greyhound and the Easy A try to flank that middle position, and the Greyhound unfortunately gets taken out. Yeah, the Easy A will force off the Panzer Grenadiers. The AT sections plus the Matilda with the AT gun in the back doing work against this Tiger. And the Tiger's forced to back off, and now the Axis are in trouble just based on VPs. As they're pushed in from both flanks at the same time. The good coordination yeah, from the allied players. Now they're starting to collapse and this Greyhound just needs to get out of there. So he's able to finish the Greyhound, but if he's not careful, he'll lose his martyr. Oh, the Bishop onto the med truck. And now the Matilda. Looks like the walking Stuka goes down, a mortar half track goes down. The Blackbird pinched from both sides. And the Bursas are not the right counter for this. Matilda's going to a second Matilda now. Uh, and they're going to really struggle here. Tiger pushing back on the flank to try to get, regain the VP, but at low health, uh, it's not going to be able to hold up too much of the AT here. Yeah, and chasing with the Bursas is not the right move here. You're just losing manpower. You're putting yourself farther behind than you already are. Yeah, and with these AT guns on both flanks, uh, and the Axis vehicles are going to have a hard time pushing. Another mortar half track looks like it's about to go down. Yep, to the Matildas. Just the single martyr. Um, oh, the med truck, what is it doing? Um, that's, that's probably a bug or a misclick. That's super frustrating. Yeah, it's a very frustrating misclick. Yeah. P3 goes down. The half track goes down. A P4 out now. Um, Three easy eights on the field. Oh man. Yeah. And uh, the instrument is able to cap up the one VP, but these easy eights are going to do work against uh, Blackbird's forces here in the center. Med truck goes down, and I think that's going to be it. Uh, no real shot for the DAC players to recover this other VP, and they're just bleeding manpower. I feel like it would only be a few more minutes too until the three easy eights and the Matilda swarm that tiger. Oh. There's just nothing that could really push them off. Yeah, Matilda's just annihilate another machine gun position. And they destroy it for good measure. And that's the GG. Hey everyone, we're back. So as usual, I'm gonna start by going over the build order. Um, I do want to highlight there was a lot going on uh, with both players here. So I'm just going to kind of summarize the general themes of the build orders. In general, uh, we were pretty impressed with how balanced the builds were. So from Fredge playing as a USF, um, the armored battle group locked in right away. You saw a reliance on the weapon support center and assault engineers. So a couple of assault engineers out uh, ended up with four squads of them at one point. Uh, then a couple of Greyhounds team weapons like machine gun, bazooka squad, uh, and two AT guns uh, into the easy eights at the end of the game, which is about what you'd expect, but uh, good use of, of slightly off meta, no mainline infantry, uh, making use of the utility from the assault engineers. Uh, his teammate, Akvavi, uh, ended up UK, the Indian artillery battle group. Um, so, oh, and of course I wrote these down wrong uh, on the wrong side. Um, okay, so he starts with the, the sapper, uh, gets a Vickers out, 
and then plays with a dingo and a couple of infantry sections before attacking into to Gurkhas uh, and bishops uh, and finishing with uh, a couple of Matildas and then just kind of reinforcing his team weapons and his infantry along the way. Uh, Matilda's a good choice against his opponents who, especially infantrymen, uh, as the name would imply playing with a really infantry heavy build so for the axis uh blackbird deo with the armored support uh battle group here um he plays a, a pretty standard uh dac build looking for light vehicles so a couple of panzer grenadiers and panzer jaegers into the eight rod and then really focused on kind of the supporting weapons so you saw a couple of mortar half tracks out you saw the walking stuka a martyr and then into a panzer three at the end uh at the very end a panzer four uh, assault group with the assault engineers probably a good call just a little bit too late meanwhile his teammate infantryman uh going with the italian combined arms battle group really leaning on the bursas early although he has a pretty balanced build he gets them out um kind of at, at intervals here uh mg34 some panzer jaegers um into a panzer three and then a tiger garrett when we were off camera we were talking about this a little bit um the first theme is we saw a lot uh, of Panzer Jaegers, um, and they ended up kind of eating a lot of rounds from some of the the uh, Allied vehicles and kind of bleeding a lot of manpower. Um, what do you see? Like, what's the risk in relying on soft counters like that from your perspective? It's good at a certain point, and which is why uh, some factions it really is like super powerful, like like DAC, because you can really knock off uh, U.S. early if you get that Greyhound out. We we saw how. Uh, how much these Greyhounds terrorized him. And if he was able to get one of those Greyhounds out earlier, I think it could have been a different game, but they stuck around. They ate a lot of shots. And it's it's a gamble, just like any other unit in this game. Because uh, then towards the end, you saw those Matildas came out and those things were just, you know, Panzer Jaegers weren't doing anything to those Matildas. He could keep them in the game. Uh, and they were taking shots from the Tiger. So he, yeah, it was, it was it was tough. And then, you know, on the on the side of uh, infantrymen with the with the bursas, right? You knew that they were going to have strong anti-infantry play. Um, Akvavi countered with good use of the machine gun to kind of like constantly suppress that infantry. And so it it can be difficult. The tendency, especially late in the game in team games, is to group your infantry together and kind of blob them. Uh, and so Akvavi was prepared with the counter for that. Uh, we mentioned it a couple times. Um, you know, Blackbird had two mortar half tracks, lots of availability for smoke there. Um, the issue was probably the the communication. I don't know if these guys are in a range team. Um, if they're if they're not, that makes it really really tough. Uh, you know, calling for smoke before your pushes. Um, and and that was something that I feel like we noticed was missing. If you can't keep your infantry in separate lanes, right, to keep them from all being suppressed at the same time. You have to do something to counter uh, the suppression effect of the machine gun. Yeah, I mean, this game was real back and forth. We saw both sides get pushed. Uh, Akvavi early got pushed back to his base, and they pushed uh, Blackbird back to his base. There was a lot of back and forth pushes, and I think uh, the Axis were just one one coordinated push away from really winning the game at, at, at a certain point. Uh, they just never got to capitalize like the allies did at the very end, both French and, and uh, Akvavi, they pushed and they kind of, they, they took a, they took out way too much for uh, Blackbird to come back. Yeah. And, and so, you know, the, kind of the team approach, I think they were able to get kind of both flanks, especially Fred was able to own that one VP enough and start to kind of pinch in that it, he took it out of consideration for the axis and then now his team weapons are able to support in the middle while still holding that VP. And I think that kind of tilted the balance uh, their direction. Um, the last thing that we talked about was just the the walking Stuka, right? Blackbird got it out. Um, and it just didn't have the impact that you needed to have. It's a big resource investment. If a couple of those rockets land differently and knock out some AT guns, knock out the half track, um, you know, maybe that battle over the middle VP swings. Um, so, so kind of a, uh, a tough uh, roll of the RNG dice uh, for Blackbird there. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was it was pretty good and, and it felt exciting, even though the Allies eventually uh, drove it home on VPs. Uh, it felt like it could have gone either way. Yeah, did you? is there anything else you wanted to, to highlight? I, I think it's really a uh, sh- shout out to Agvavi for handling, because I was saying 
uh, once that tiger came out, I, I thought he was going to be pretty screwed because uh, he didn't have anything that could really punch a hole in it besides a six pounder. But he was able to keep it at bay with just some boys rifles, a six pounder, you know, some Matildas. He was really putting in work, keeping that off the field because uh, that let those easy eights wreak havoc on much weaker units. I, I thought, you know, if this was me, I would have been screaming to my teammate, bring your easy eights over here. Let's kill this tiger. But he was calm. He took care of it and kept it occupied. And that really made the tiger useless because it, it wasn't able to be the big behemoth that it should be. Yeah. I wonder if, if he plays that tiger in the center with you know with blackbird if that combined push isn't enough to to get some wipes or some some vehicle kills and kind of swing the engagement in their direction um having it out there on the flank and the tiger is not super mobile right it's not like the easy eights that can be all over the map um so once you kind of commit it somewhere uh, it takes a couple of minutes to relocate um but yeah good work by fabi uh countering it there overall a uh, pretty exciting match um, Garrett, really appreciate you, uh, hopping on and casting this one with me. Yeah. Anytime. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure. Cool. All right. Well, that's all for us gents. Uh, and we will catch you all in the next one.